second um, contribution that I'd like to talk about um, is, is one which is now being um, put into place by the British National Web Archive uh, as of very, very recently. And it's a technique that um, uh, we developed uh, a few years ago with the idea of um, there are major um, uh, web archives in the world, and isn't it an idea um, to try to make one's own collections um, thematically on the basis of existing archived websites? So, and this is also a project called um, Mementos. You can look it up. Uh, it's another project where one makes uh, exactly what I just said, makes a collection, um, thematical or otherwise, uh, on the basis of the availability of websites across all web archives, all national web archives or all web archives. So uh, the example um, that I want to give to you is one um, that uh, was done by the Dutch national newspaper, the NRC Handelsblad. Um, and they made a collection, largely from the Wayback Machine, of uh, Dutch extremist websites, uh, uh, right-wing extremists in particular. And, and they, they made this collection, and then they made a, a spreadsheet, um, you know, sort of basically saying when, it, when, when, when a website started, a description of it, uh, et cetera. And then, and then undertook a study, um, which is a very interesting one, whereby their question was, um, is Dutch culture hardening? Is Dutch culture becoming more extreme? Um, and on the basis of this particular collection, they went through and looked at the websites, and they looked at the language on the websites, uh, how that language changed over time. And they found that on the right-wing websites and also on the right-wing extremist websites that the language used was becoming more and more extreme. Um, and thereby they sort of cautiously concluded um, that Dutch culture itself is hardening, is becoming more extremist in the use of language. Now this was on the basis of making, of, of having a research question, you know, is Dutch culture hardening, and then creating your own collection on the basis of existing archived websites, and then, and then devising a, a, a research strategy in order to answer that question. Um, the third one um, is a project that was done uh, by myself, Eric, Michael Stevenson, and others um, to try to uh, look into um, the extent to which a particular period of web history could be studied uh, using the, um, the the web arc the, the Wayback Machine of the Internet Archive. Um, and the period in question here is the early blogosphere. Uh, so um, there is a website uh, called Eton Web, E T O N Web, which for many years um, had a list of blogs. It was, in some sense, the portal, if you can use that word, uh, for the blogosphere. So it had a, com a complete list of blogs, um, or claimed to. And of course, it didn't because these were uh, largely American blogs um, and, uh, and English language ones. But nevertheless, at some point in 2001, um, Eaton, the guy, sort of gave up because there were just too many now there's just too many blogs. I can't list them anymore. So to us, that was, that was the sign um, that the early blogosphere, that period, was over. It was, it was no longer early. It was much larger. So we went to the Wayback Machine. We took Eaton's list. And we called up all the websites uh, on that list. Um, and um, we created this picture. And what we found, <coughs> quite remarkably, um, was that that only a certain percentage, 20% or something, was missing. So we created a technique whereby we could find out how much of, the, how much of a particular period 
was actually archived and what was missing. Then what we did is we did a hyperlink, a historical hyperlink analysis. So this is one of the first cases of historical hyperlink analysis. Um, so, the, so using the, these are all the web pages, using the links from these uh, pages. And so what we were able to do is, is find out um, whether or not, find out which of the websites uh, were significant, had, had many links, but also whether or not the missing websites here were themselves significant, or we gave them context. Um, so we sort of, in some sense, uh, conjured up a, a past version of the web, uh, but in a different form. Um, this is another one, uh, similar technique. This was. Um, by um, Esther uh, Valtefeda uh, and Anna Helmund. This was uh, published in, uh, in First Monday. Um, this is a, an image of the evolution of the Dutch blogosphere. Um, one of the better information graphics. Um, very beautiful. Um, so you can, you can, this is also historical hyperlink analysis. You can read about it in, uh, in First Monday. Okay, the, the last one, this is, a, this is the most recent um, uh, project along these lines, um, is um, to study not, not, um, um, not the content of websites and not the linking behavior of websites, but the underlying code. And it was, it was quite, a, quite the, we came upon this quite sort of um, coincidentally. So I don't know how many of you have the uh, add-on installed called Ghostery. Yeah. Um, Ghostery, as you know, shows you um, you know third-party elements um, of on particular web website web pages you visit. So do they have tracking? Do they have tracking elements in the website or not? Um, and are there third-party cookies or etc.? And you get this panel. Um, that shows you um, what's, um, what's embedded in this particular web page in terms of bugs and beacons and, and all the sort of creepy tracking things. Yeah? Um, now, uh, coincidentally, we had Ghostry on and we're visiting an uh, archived uh, web page and we realized that it also works for archived websites. So you can see from older websites, um, the tracking elements built into them. And so therefore, you can watch over time um, the, the history of tracking, basically. So um, this is also in, um, in a paper uh, by Lonica von der Felden. Um, I believe it's been published. So you can see, for example, here's the New York Times, the number of trackers uh, per year. So you can see the kind, not only sort of quantities, but also types, um, and, and can write the history of, uh, of, of, of tracking. Um, so those are four contributions to how to use uh, web archives. So number one are, are single site histories, so capturing uh, the history of a website and, and narrating a story. And we'll tell you about the kinds of uh, stories, uh, tell you in more detail the kinds of stories that can be uh, can be narrative and, and the sort of narrative forms that you can use. Um, collection making, make your own collection, but not go and archive the web yourselves, but rather use existing uh, web archives and create a thematic collection. So I showed you the example of, of Dutch extremist websites, but there are also other thematic co uh, collections possible. And how to do that? Well, rely on uh, on other other others lists. So I, the third one I showed you, researching a period of web history, relies on a list uh, by Eaton Web. Relies on an expert list. Relies on an editorial list, a directory, if you will, uh, which uh, listed um, um, websites uh, or website type up to a particular period in time. And so you can query then the Wayback Machine 
uh, for um, that list, uh, and you can do stuff with it. You can see the extent to which that period of web history is well covered in the archive or not. Um, and then finally, um, you can uh, write a, a history of, of tracking or of surveillance, online surveillance, um, through using the, the GoStreet plugin um, and looking at the tracking elements on historical websites or stored websites. And what's nice about GoStreet that we, that we figured out in this particular project was that their tracking, their list of tracking elements uh, is cumulative. So when a new one comes, they add it. They don't delete the old ones. Um, so then we could still uh, uh, see the, 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 old, uh, the, the old tracking elements, uh, uh, whether, the, whether they uh, were in use or not. Yeah, and there was a tool, indeed, um, called the Tracker Tracker, uh, which, which uh, does that, that work for you, which sits on top of GoStreet and allows you to pull out the, uh, the elements of a, of a website. So what I did um, is talk a little bit about the website as archived object in particular, um, so as, as a particular approach to website studies. Um, and the different sorts of historiographies built into web archives. Yeah, and they're very, very different. Um, whereas the Wayback Machine tried to, tries to um, archive the whole web. Um, special collections through web sphere analysis concentrate largely on events. Um, and uh, national archives concentrate largely on you know, the nation or what's of public interest. Uh, and Nowadays, the autobiographical tradition, the selfie city, is in some sense um, uh, one of the more, more limited approaches to, 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 to um, studying, uh, using web data to, to form studies. So the cultural compar or comparisons of posing cultures across cities. Um, and, uh, and, and also talked a little bit about thinking how to uh, you know, rethink web archive use. So what else can we do uh, apart from those particular historiographies built in to the existing uh, archives and, and collection approaches? What else can we do? Um, so I showed you a couple of things. Um, on the one hand, creating a history of a website. Most, most of the things that I showed you had to do with, with studying the medium. Um, but there are some things that I showed you that also uh, are not studying the medium, but rather doing more social or cultural research. But those studying the medium um, were the history of Google um, and how Google um, eventually, over time, um, basically sort of moved out the, 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 the work of librarians um, and, uh, and uh, privileged uh, search over, over a directory. Um, also showed you uh, some work on, on uh, early blogosphere and, and how one would study a period of, of, of web history. Uh, but also on the, on the side of the, uh, and, and the tracking technologies, how much tracking was built in there. But also in the social research, that making a collection of, let's say, extremist websites or some other collection, um, which you then can, can, uh, can, can study uh, for, for social research purposes. Um, so this is embodied, this story of studying the website as, as, as archived objects is embodied in a much larger, let's say, tradition or, or set of thoughts about, about website studies more generally, uh, where we talked about um, you know, color, website design, usability, uh, optimizing websites for engines, writing websites for engines instead of for readers. Um, and, and that particular realization is a, is a difficult one for many, uh, that you're in fact writing for an engine. Um, you're in, in some sense, uh, I mean, the extent to which this also applies for, for social media and for Twitter, um, you, know, you have the real sense that you're writing for, uh, for, for an audience, for your, you know, you're the micro-celebrity writing for your followers. Um, but of course, you're writing for metrics as well. Huh? So in some sense, you're still writing for the machine. You're writing for clout. You're writing for. Um, so so uh, it, you know, you might have the impression that you're writing for an audience, but you're also writing for the for the for the machine. 
that's it. Uh, thanks very much. Um, we'll see you later on.